Good morning, Saints. Good morning. All right, so it's Martin Luther King Sunday, Junior, birthday. Um, Black History Month coming up. We're going to try that again because this is how we do it at the Black Church. Good morning, Saints. Good morning. Good morning. I'm going to sit because, as most of you know, I'm not well. I can't stand that long. Um, so if you can't see me, take that as a sign from God that you're just supposed to listen. Amen. Before I start, let us pray. Holy Creator, the God, God of love and glory, God of peace, thank you for this time together where we can reflect on your word so that it may shine in us, so that your love is ever present in this world. God, I just pray right now that the meditations of my heart and the words of my mouth be not a stumbling block. Be not mine, but yours, God, so that every person in this room can hear what you need to say to them. Yes. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So it is Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s birthday week. We celebrate that to remind us of where we've been and to remind us of where we could go. Oh, yeah. Fifty years ago, the world looked very different, didn't it? Yes. I wasn't alive, I can say that with pride. <laughs> I'll get there. For God willing, I will get there. Amen. But the world was a very different place. We hear in Martin Luther King Jr.'s speech this morning that darkness cannot drive out darkness. Only light can. Amen. And for a moment, we had a lot of bright, shining lights that led us to a church service where we could be brown and black and white and yellow and L and G and B and T and stand together and say, we are worthy because Christ loved us, no matter what you think outside these days. Yes. So let's talk about Jesus. I, <laughs> Pastor Judy sent me a message saying, all right, now you have to, you have to figure out what you're going to preach on this Sunday and send in your, your scripture. You don't have to preach on the lectionary. Oh, no, she did. She did. She said, you don't have to preach on the lectionary. It's Martin Luther the King Jr.'s birthday. Preach on whatever you want. And so I started thinking, all right, what do I want to preach on? What do I want to preach on? What do I want to preach on? And God said, open up that lectionary because I've got something to say. It's not what you want to preach on, it's what my people need to hear. Amen. So this morning, the second Sunday after Epiphany, we see, in tradition, the first miracle of Jesus. We see Jesus and his mother going to a wedding, right? Mm -hmm. I always struggled with this scripture because I always wondered why Jesus had his first miracle be something like water into wine. Why couldn't Jesus heal the leper? Why couldn't Jesus cast, cast out the demons? Because if he did that first, everyone would know he was the king. Right. Amen. But God had another plan. See, most people believe that the wedding in Cana was John's wedding, his cousin's, right? And in reading the scripture this week, there was something that stuck out to me that I really, really responded to as a sassy gay black man in America. Yeah. Well. So we see the wedding, and the first thing we see is Mary coming up to Jesus and saying, we're out of wine. Mm -hmm. And Jesus, just like I would have done, kind of cops an attitude. <laughs> he said, what does that have to do with me? Now, you have to realize that if this was John's wedding, we don't know that it was, but most scholars believe it. If this was John's wedding and they ran out of wine, it would have forever disgraced the family. Yeah. It would have taken their name down in social ranking, right? And Mary, without missing a beat, just like my mother, <laughs> she doesn't say anything to Jesus. She says to the servants, y'all do what he tells you. Because he, she knows that he is going to obey the calling that he has been called to. And he says to her, this is not my hour. She says, you better make it your hour. <laughs> <laughs> and he 
does. And there are these great big stone jars. Now these jars are important for a few reasons, right? First, they are purification jars. In ancient Hebrew Jewish times, you had to be purified to do anything, to eat dinner. So in most people's houses, especially at a party this size, they would have these purification jars. <clears throat> and you would wash yourself before you entered the house. You would wash yourself before you ate food. You would wash your dishes in the jars so that you could purify, so that you could actually commune with God. It was no coincidence that Jesus chose these jars. He could have said, go out to the well with this cup. But he chose the jars of purification because the Bible, especially in the New Testament, it loves the theme that as it was in the beginning, it shall be again. And what is the writer here foreshadowing with the wine? Jesus' first miracle, turning water into wine, what was his last act? Communion. communion. And what does communion symbolize? Well, this is the, blood of Jesus. the blood of Jesus to purify us all. Amen. And Jesus turned that water into wine and said, take it to the chief steward. That's important. He didn't say take it to a steward. He said to the top. Now, the steward was in charge of making sure that the household, the, the community, the temple, whatever he was in charge of, was running at peak capacity. And he tasted the wine, and what does he say? It's Most good. people save the best for, uh, serve the best at the front because people won't know the difference, but you have saved the best for last. Not only did Jesus perform the miracle, and turn the water into wine, and have the beginning become the end, and the end become the beginning, the Alpha and the Omega, but he gave it his best. Hallelujah. Amen. And that is what we are called to do, church. Okay, yes. That is what God wants of us. Yes. My sermon title this week is My Hope is Built. So I want to share with you a few definitions. Because we throw around things a lot that we don't even know what they mean. Right. What is the definition of hope? The definition of hope is a feeling or expectation and desire for certain things to happen. And the definition of faith is a complete trust, complete trust or confidence in someone or something. Now what's the definition of trust? A firm belief and the reliability of truth, ability, or strength in someone. Today we celebrate Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Why? Because a man in an hour of darkness stood up and gave people hope. He built hope for all of us. Mm -hmm. We can look back at his words and teachings today and be inspired to be better people. Where is your hope built? What feeling do you have, or desire do you have, what expectation do you have for what's going to happen in your life? See, God promised us a lot of stuff in the Bible, didn't he? God said, I know the plans I have for you. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. God said, be strong and courageous. Do not be terrified or discouraged, for I am your Lord, and I am with you wherever you may go. Amen. Now the thing about that is that we have to take a step back and think about who we are. And then we have to think about, who is God to you? Is God just the person you call on when things are bad? Are you angry with God? Are you joyful with God? 
Do you call on God in times of praise and wonder? Yes. Yeah. Now, the thing about all of those statements is none of them are wrong. Who God is to you is directly correlated to where your hope is being built. Because God built you with a purpose. God set you on this planet with a purpose. God said, not only am I going to give you a purpose, but you are going to be a part of my body. And without you, without one part, the whole thing falls down. It does not work. So you have to figure out what your part is. And you have to stay in your lane. Yes. And that's where we don't like it. <laughs> Some of us want to be an eye when we're really a fingernail. <laughs> but the fingernails dig the dirt. They plant the seed. You have to realize that God's plan for you is to prosper you. And when you stay in your lane, and you commune with God, and you know who God is to you, whether other people believe that that relationship is right or wrong, that God is going to set you on fire the way that this world needs to see that light. Amen. Yes. Amen. The second question you need to ask, is who are you to God? God chose you. God created you. God gave you gifts. God gave you breath. You are here as a part of the body. See, we like to canonize people. We like to turn people into saints. We like to make them greater than they are. Martin Luther King Jr. was not a saint. He didn't, he was not able to do anything that you are not able to do. In the same way that the word of God, the Bible, is not the word of God. God uses these things to be the word of God to you. You know, some of us can read the Bible and, and say, oh, God spoke to me so deeply in this passage. And other people will read the Bible and be like, this is just some old words. I don't get it. The church is not the house of God. You are the house of God. You are the house of God. And when you start building your hope, your expectation, your feeling, your love for who God is to you, and you set yourself in your lane, God will use you and you will never look back. We have to get rid of the ego to be filled with the Spirit. And that's what Martin Luther King Jr. teaches us. When we come together, we are unstoppable. Amen. Because together, we are the body mm -hmm. of God. Yes. Will you pray with me? Sovereign Holy God, thank you for your creation. Thank you for taking time to love us to smile on us, <coughs> to give us breath and life, to give us hope and peace and joy. God, right now I just pray over this church that you might ignite it, set it ablaze so that when we walk out of these doors, every person sees the light of your love on our face. <coughs> that knows that you have a purpose for them, that you have created them to do great things. God, I pray against the ego, and I pray to be filled with the Spirit this morning so that we may know your love fully, and so that more importantly, everyone that we meet can feel your love and your peace. In Jesus' name. Thank <laughs> you.